So let's get going again. Last time we looked at the tools that you're going to need and the data you're going to need if you're going to do football analytics or football data science. This time, we're actually going to start putting those tools into action. Now, before we can do that, there's still a little bit of downloading and organization we need to do. So one thing that's really important about this course is that you're going to do it too. It's not just going to be you sitting watching me talk about data analytics and so on. It's also going to involve you getting involved and doing the programming yourself. So the steps that we're going to look at today is we're going to start with downloading some code. This is the code from, our, from the course. We're going to download that from GitHub and put it into a folder so you can work with it. That's you. Then we're going to download StatsBomb data and Scout data, which we're going to put into that folder. And we're going to, I'm going to show you basically how you should organize your work folder for the course and also when you want to do more analysis in the future. I'm going to talk about how you can load in data and then I'm going to get into exactly what a JSON file is. A JSON file is a certain type of file that comes up a lot in data science now. It's a certain organization of the data. It's a bit like a sort of spreadsheet you can kind of take things out of in a way. So um, I'm going to talk about that. Then we're going to do a few bits of standard programming. We're going to look at for loops, looping over data. We're going to look at if statements. And then finally, we're going to look, we're going to do that in the context of identifying some specific matches. So if I share my screen here, I think I'm just going to show the same things as I've just said. Downloading code, downloading data, organizing your work folder, loading in that data. That data comes in the format of a JSON file, doing some for loops, looping over data then if statements, deciding if you should execute certain commands. And then we're going to look at how you identify specific matches that you might be interested in analyzing in the next stage of the course. You can download the code that we're going to use today by going into the GitHub site that's up there. It's under the Friends of Tracking GitHub site. Go in there. Um, all the code that you need is available. Press the download button. You can either open it on the desktop or you can download it as a zip file and create a folder on your computer, which you'll work from today. Now I'm going to download two lots of data. One is the StatsBomb data and one is the Scout data. I'll start with the um, I'll start with the StatsBomb. I'm going to share my screen here so you can get an idea of what I'm doing. Now I'm just going to go StatsBomb um, data. GitHub. You can also go in via the StatsBomb um, web page itself, or you can go directly into the GitHub, which means you're accepting the terms and conditions for downloading the data. And I'll go over here, go to clone or download. And I'm going to download a zip file that has all of the data in it. You see it's downloading here. And I'm going to copy that data file into the StatsBomb folder. So this is Socomatics in Python. This is the code that we've already downloaded from the Friends of Tracking GitHub. I'll open up this StatsBomb. It's quite a big data set. Um, it's going to take a few minutes to download. I have, of course, downloaded this before now. This isn't the first time I've downloaded it. But um, yeah, I didn't know it was this big. I think I'll do one of these. Great, it's now downloaded. And oh, I've opened, I didn't want to do that. I wanted to, okay. Well, I've opened the zip file here. I'll just copy that into the directory. Okay, yeah, I've downloaded this before, you can see. Um, okay, open data master. And inside all of these files, you've got data, doc, image. What actually I want to do is I want to have these files in here. So I'm going to put them all there. Um, and I'm going to take away this folder just now. I'll sort that out later. So the point here is I've put them, here's the StatsBomb directory inside the Socomatics in Python directory. And now I've got my data, I've got my doc, um, I've got my license, and you should definitely go through all this material before you start working. But this is now all the StatsBomb data here. So that's nice. 
Next thing I want to do is get the Y Scout data. And I said last time, this Y, this y Scout data can be found on Figshare. Whoops. Figshare Y Scout. I'll just search. And I've got it, soccer match data set. And this is a little bit, it's a little bit messier to download the stuff here, but you've got basically, you've got everything here. So you've got teams, you've got events. I've actually, the events is what I use most. I've already I downloaded the events thing, but I'll just show you how you download, for example, the matches. So this is a list of all the matches that are done and you click on it. And huh, yeah, download. So the matches come as a zip file. I've put that zip file into this folder and unzip it. And now I've got all the match data. I can stick the matches in the bin. Then we want to have, well, we, we basically, I'm not sure that we'll use all of this, this data set, but we might use the teams as well. So teams, click on teams, download teams. There we go. It's got, got it, it's all downloaded. It actually just came as a single JSON file, so we'll put that into there. And so you can just download um, all of the Scout. We're, we're actually just gonna use the events for these first seven lectures, so you probably don't need any, any more than that, but um, you can download all of the data and put it here. So just to go through this again, make it clear, if I do a share just of how my folder should look, it will look like this. I've got the different parts of the code here. Uh, this is lesson zero up to six. I've got my FC Python, some of the code that I've used from there in, in one library. Then I've got StatsBomb data in one folder and I've got Scout data in another folder. Now it's time to open up Python and find the first file. So if I open up, I go into Socrematics um, in Python, Here's the folder that we just created, and I'm going to change the folder to that. So notice that I, I actually changed the directory there, and press this, this uh, button here to change the directory. And now I am going to open the first file in the course. Oh, whoops, still, that's still on the wrong directory. So Socomatics Python will load in the data. That's um, the first, first part of the course. Right, so here we've got our, our whole file. I'm not gonna run the whole thing. Now the idea here is I'm gonna take it step by step, go through the different lines of the code and explain what they do. And one of the things I always think is very difficult when you get started is that you hear this, the, the, you hear that the StatsBomb data, it's in the format of a JSON file. Now what's a JSON file? How am I gonna deal with this? I think the best thing to do actually is to go onto Google and it says, I, I've written the code here, how do I open a JSON file in Python? So that's what I just Googled when I first uh, found out I had to open up a JSON file. I have to admit, I had, I had actually worked with a JSON file before. But I Google how to open up a JSON file in Python. And there's basically a library to do this. And so if we do this import JSON, we put this command in, it imports a bunch of functions that will allow you to open up JSON files. And the first one of, of this is a JSON.load and it allows you to load it in. I think my point here really is that you don't need to worry too much about these particular commands. Um, they're things that you take from the internet, stick them into your code, and then you can load in your JSON file. And you see here that I've loaded in, I've got StatsBomb. The important thing here to realize is this is a directory, StatsBomb data, competitions. If you look in the StatsBomb data folder, you'll find a, a list of competitions. And I've basically loaded in a list of the competitions in the StatsBomb data. Now you'll see that it's appeared up here. And if I click on this, I now have a list of the 19 different competitions that are covered in the StatsBomb data. And this is the inside. Now what I, I now am inside my JSON file, the first layer of this JSON file is the um, is each of the different uh, competitions. And then if I click, I can find out. Here's the first one. This is the FA Women's Super League competition ID thirty seven. 
This is the when the matches were made available, country name and so on. This is the season. That's the first one. Second one, click on that. I find it's the it's again the FA Women's Super League. It's a different season, the season before, and so on. Here's I've got the World Cup um, 2018. And here I've got La Liga uh, from 2018-19. So this tells us the different competitions that are available within, within the, uh, the StatsBomb data set. Now, I'm actually interested in competition 72, which is the Women's World Cup. I actually found that by just going through all of these until I found the Women's World Cup, which I fancied plotting. And here I have um, competition ID is 72, competition name is Women's World Cup. And so I've, I've found that that's the Women's World Cup that I'm interested in, and I've set by hand the correct competition ID number. I could have actually used the name too, but I'm just going to do the, the competition ID number. And now I'm going to load in all of the matches for that Women's World Cup. So let me set first, just set the competition ID. Notice I'm doing this thing where I, I select what I'm interested in executing and I press that button to run it. And the competition ID is now set to 72. Again, you can see that inside the variable explorer. Okay, let's load the matches. And I'll run this code. Oh, yeah, I forgot to change the directory name. I made it, I separated my um, uh, uh, directories into StatsBomb and, and Scouts. So I have StatsBomb data matches, and there we go. Um, and now I've opened up the data file, and you'll see inside here, there's a new JSON file that's added in. This JSON file is a list of matches. The first one, the competitions, was a list of competitions. So it's a list of the matches from the Women's World Cup 2019. So a dictionary, a dictionary looks like this. You have a, a, a list of, so away score has value three, away team has this list of values, this dictionary of values. So you see how these things actually go down in levels, one after the other. And so this has the away score as an integer, it has a, a dictionary. We're now down into the third level where it looks at, it has the away team gender, female, away team group, which group they were in, as their IT, ID, this is the Argentine women's team, and this is some other information about the country. You don't need to know all this information, but what you do need to be able to do is navigate this type of information. So often it's very useful to start your navigation in exactly the way I'm doing here by using the variable explorer to go in and find out what's going on, what type of information we've got here. We've got information about the away team, the home team, the dates and so on. So next thing I thought of doing is I've got this home, I've got the, the different matches and you can see here, if I go into the matches, you can see here there is a home team name. So here was one of the first matches. This is Scotland was the home team and it's under name. And in order to get the names of the teams, I have to step in to these uh, different levels. As well as the variable explorer, we can also find out what's going on inside these JSON files, inside these JSON data structures by um, interrogating them like this. So if I put matches, it actually comes up with a massive, massive long list of all of these matches. Now, if I want to look at the first match in the data set, it's sort of the, the Python counts from zero. So if I want to look at the first match in the data set, I put matches zero. And that tells me that's exactly the same thing as I did when I clicked on this and I looked at match zero here. You see you have the away score three, away team Argentina, Home team Scotland, home score three. That's inside there. And it's exactly the same thing. Should be exactly the same thing here. Yes, we have home score three, away score three, Scotland's team versus Argentina. And if I look at matches one, that's the next match in the list. Match two, I can, matches two, I can do that, that thing too. And also if I want to do matches zero, and then I want to know the home team. So if I do this, and how do I know to write that index? Well, if I've looked inside matches and I've looked inside here, I've got 
um, I have got the home team here. And so you see that says home team ID this and home team name this. So if I run this command, then I get the same thing. I get the home team ID that it's the Scotland's women's team. And what I really want to know is I don't care about any of these ID numbers. What I really want to know is the home team's name. I get the home team's name is Scotland's women's. And next thing is that's one of the matches. Well, how do we actually look through all of the matches? And so the, the code I've written here, it loops through all of the matches. And if you've done programming before, you'll be used to this idea of for i equals one to 10 or something like this. Python's really nice because it has this for match in matches. So matches is a list and match is one of the matches in that list. And the command for, it loops through all of the matches, one after the other, and returns the information. So we're interested in the home team name, the away team name, we're interested in the score, and then I've just done this little thing to describe the text of those things. So I'll run this first, and then we will see what it does. Boom, 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 boom. It produces a massive list of all of the matches. Starting up here with the Scotland's women versus Argentine's women, finished 3-3. Norway, Australia, finished 1-1. Spain, United States, 1-2, and so on. And that's all generated by first identifying the names, the scores, then creating this described text, which is basically a concatenation of the names and the scores. And then we can actually just print out that thing. We loop over and over again and do that. So say we're interested in one particular match. One match I was very interested in in that particular World Cup is England-Sweden. It's always nice for me to see England play against Sweden, um, my two home nations. Well, I'm also, I grew up in Scotland as well, so I've got, I've got three home nations if you're allowed. To, I don't know, you're, I don't think you're allowed to have both England and Scotland, but I sort of do. And I've also got Sweden as well as my home nation. So we've got the England-Sweden um, match. So I'm interested specifically, I'd like to know what is the ID of the England-Sweden um, match so that I can analyze that match in more detail later. So the first thing I do is I say, I make a variable called home team required, which tells you the name of the team that you're interested in um, and an away team required. I, I just happened to know that it was England that was listed first on the, on the FIFA listings for this match. So we'll run that. And now I'm actually going to loop through, there's other ways of doing this, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to loop through all of the matches until I find the one I want. And so I'll, for each match, I'm going to find the home team name of that match, the way team name of that match. And does the home team name match the home team required? Does the away team name match the away team required? And if so, I'm going to set the match ID required to that particular match ID. So let's run that code. And I'm also going to print out the answer that I've got. And the answer is, da, 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 69301. So the stats bomb ID for that particular match is 69301. And we're going to use that in the next lecture where I'm going to uh, look in detail at what happened in that match. I'm going to use the ID in order to, well, in order to tell my program this is the match that I'm particularly interested in. If I was interested in, for example, the Scotland um, Argentina match that we just looked at, then I would do this and change that and run that. And that's got ID 68338. And so I can put in the names of the teams that I'm interested in and get out the particular ID that I'm interested in. So I think, as I said, I said right at the start, you're not, hopefully, maybe I forgot to remind you to do this, hopefully you've been working through this code at the same time that I've been uh, working through this code, that you've got your next to your Python window, you've got me talking and you can actually sit there and put the things in at the same time and understand how it works. And if you've done that, or at least once you've done that, um, I think you should pause my video for a second now 
and you should go and do a little bit about uh, this yourself. So I've, got, I've put up three exercises you can work on. The first one is to edit the code above to print out the result list for the Men's World Cup. For some reason, they're not called, it's not called the England men's team, it's called England, um, which I suppose has just become a, a traditional way of thing, doing things. But anyway, print out the result list for the Men's World Cup, then edit the code above to find the ID for the England versus Sweden match. And then finally, uh, if you want a bit of an extra challenge, write a new bit of code to write out a list of just Sweden's results in the, in the tournament. So just the results from Sweden match. So pause the video, go away and do that. You're not allowed to continue watching until you've done that. And I'll be back in a second to show you the answers to those questions. So while you're walking, well, <laughs> So while you're working away, because I'm sure you're working on the problems just now, or maybe you finish them, I think I'll just say one thing that I think is quite important about the philosophy and the approach to programming in this course. I'm not telling you the syntax of how you do every command in Python. And I often myself get the syntax wrong now and again. The idea really that the sort of philosophy is that you learn by doing. So you, you take, as I, as I said in, the, in the, the first lecture, you might, for example, take code from FC Python or elsewhere and see how they've solved a problem, see what the syntax is, and then you start to build up an understanding. And if you don't get something, if there's something you don't quite understand, so often the solution is to search online. You type in the problem that you have, and often somebody has already answered it on one of the numerous help sites for our like um, Stack Overflow and so on. You can actually find an answer where people go through even the most simplest things step by step. Right, so how did you do? Hopefully you've uh, done these questions now. I'll just have a little look at this myself, see if I can do it. I'm just gonna edit the code above to print. I have to remember what my own questions were. Um, first, actually, first thing you need to do, I mean, of course we can just write in here, England, Sweden. But the first thing we're gonna to have to do is actually find the competition ID for the Men's World Cup. So I want to go all the way back to competitions. And I think I remember seeing it. No, it, was, it wasn't that first one. Yeah, it was this one here. So the competition, the Statsbomb competition ID for the male World Cup is 43. So I put in 43 in my competition ID. That's for the, show what I want to do is this. Keep these two things separate. Um, 43 men's World Cup 2018 has competition ID 43, just to remind myself. And then I'll run this code, see what happens. Oh, I didn't get that right. Because, oh yes, I remember this. The, if you look inside the stats bomb, JSON file and for some reason the JSON file is called three. So you'll probably have found this out Then I run again and there we go. Well done. We've made a list of all of the scores for all of the matches and England versus Sweden has ID 68338. That's the first thing. Edit the code above to find the, oh yeah, so it's already, I've put out, I've put out the results of the Men's World Cup and I've done it for England versus Sweden. Write new code to write out a list of just Sweden's results. So if we're just interested in Sweden's results, I said write new code, but we can actually do it by editing it up here. So let's do this. And we were right in the line here. If home team name equals Sweden or away team name equals Sweden, because they can be in either of those positions. I'm going to stick some brackets around 
I don't know if I need to stick brackets around the whole thing. We're going to see. I think I'm not here to teach you syntax of Python, but I will say this, indent is very important. So the, the way it works in Python is that you have to indent here and you have to have a colon here. And so this says that if this thing is true, if, if the home team name is equal to Sweden or the away team name is equal to Sweden, then we'll print it out. I'll just select that and see if it works. Yeah, it did work, look at that. So match between Mexico, Sweden, 0-3, um, one nil. Sweden versus Switzerland, um, one nil. I haven't printed them in order here, um, but uh, they've, they've got all the matches out and they've come out. This was the one where England finally defeated Sweden and sent them home. And that's that, thank you very much. If you tune in next time, we'll be analyzing both shots and passes, show you how to actually print out match data um, in the next lecture. Thank you, bye-bye.